Hi all and welcome to Kish Tab. Now in this video, what we are going to see is what you can do inside Kish Tab LMS and how you're going to go about it. So let's first see that as a new institute, uh, what you're gonna do. So first you will go ahead and sign up. In sign up, you will put your details. When you are setting your password, you have to make sure that the password should be eight to 15 characters long, should have a caps, should have a, a lowercase num uh, uh, alphabet, uh, should have a number and a symbol. The same password to confirm, valid email address, valid phone number, go ahead and submit. Once you have done that, you will be forwarded to uh, a license and agreement page, so terms and conditions. So that's where you have to click on agree. You have to enter your OTP. And once done, you have to click on activate your account. Now, once your account is activated, go ahead, click on login, put your details, your user ID, your password, go ahead, put the capture. And now you are into your profile page. So now on profile page, as you can see, I have filled a few details. I'll walk you through them. So I have made it Kishtab International School. I have given the contact person first name, middle name, last name. Only first name is mandatory, rest is not. Go ahead, put yeah, your email and phone number will already be in here. If you want, you can go ahead and change this phone, phone number and email. But remember, this email is extremely important to get your OTPs and in communication. So keep the email which is in use and it's functional. Go ahead, put the mailing address and select the time zone. For me, it's Asia, Kolkata, my address. And then I go ahead and click on upload logos. I have uploaded some logos, so I'll tell you what these logos are all about. So the first logo, what you see is will be used for your favicon and everywhere we have to use the square logo, it'll be used. So in this case, you can see the Kish tabs favicon for this institute will be looking like this, right? So now go ahead and upload another logo, which will be shown right over here and in the website where everywhere you will traverse through the pages, this logo will be your go to go back to home and all. So once you have loaded these logos, go ahead, click on save. Now, once you have saved your profile, go ahead on learning management system. Now in learning management system, you can go ahead and select your mm, theme. Uh, so let's say I will select a theme Firebrick, right? Uh, I will go ahead and I can check the demo as how it looks like. Go ahead, fill what you want your uh, domain name to be. Click on save theme and domain and go ahead and deploy. Once all this is done, right, your institute will be ready and you can check the deployment status right here, right? So you can see in my case, uh, my institute was deployed, right? And now I can go ahead and check out my institute. So let's go ahead and get inside my institute and see what all I can do over there. So now I went to the domain I chose. So this is my domain, kishtab.go to my tutorials.com. Now, in the moment I enter this URL, once my uh, installation is done, I can see a page like this where you might not see your pay pictures and all. You will not see your notice board. Uh, you might not see all these pictures. Uh, you might not see all these, uh, you know, different section of pictures, the videos, uh, the study trip and tricks and vlog but I'll show you how you can go ahead and easily upload them. So now as an admin, I'll go ahead and click on menu. I'll go to site maintenance and in site maintenance, all these videos can be uploaded. I'll take you one by one through them. So first of all, I'll take you to help videos. The help videos is something which is for me. Uh, I actually created for people to uh, a video like this for people to go ahead and do what they want to do on a website, how they do that on a website, right? So all those things where you might not have that option, but what you will have is slideshow. So I'll take you to the slideshow. That slideshow is the top thing which is going on in your screen. Now I'll go ahead, uh, you know, I can actually browse pictures from my system or I can just uh, go ahead and there are a lot of them for me. I'll go ahead and discard them too, right? So as of now, I will, I'm happy with these pictures, what I have. I will, if, if I don't like something, I'll select them and discard. All right, so it is that simple to create your slideshow. Now let's go ahead and see the next step, which is picture collection. 
So you have seen there is a summer camp and different section of pictures, right? So how we get to that? Now I can go ahead, create a new collection. I can name it. That name will be going on your heading. So I will name it carefully and I'll save it. So now over here, you can see I have created two already, summer camp and independence day. So let's go ahead, look at summer camp, how the summer camp look like. My student went to summer camp and how the uh, whole show was like. So we can go ahead and load these pictures over here. Loading is simple. You can drag and drop in this section or you can go ahead and click on browse. If you don't like a picture, you can go ahead, select it and discard it. And same to another, another section. So there are less pictures. I can go ahead and start increasing those pictures. Let's go to the next section. Tips and tricks. It's very simple. Record a tips and tricks video. Select a language, what you want to uh, have them in, right? Uh, I have most of uh, most of the tips and tricks videos in Hindi, so you can see over here. I can go ahead, either keep them in Hindi or go ahead and put them in English, right? Uh, and uh, either uh, and, and same thing, I can actually put a caption on them and go ahead and drag them too. So I'll show you a few what is there in Hindi. So this is the language. I can actually select a video, change the caption. I can do all that. So this is about vitamins. I can go ahead and change it to vitamins importance and save it right if i don't like something same way i will go ahead and discard it let's go ahead to the next section in site maintenance and that's vlogs so you see those few videos at the bottom of the screen right those are vlogs vlogs are something what uh, you know teachers are talking to the sub uh, to about the subject to the students or a daily activity or or something for students to getting keep uh, keep engaged or some activities wants to be delivered to students that's all can be captured in vlogs the same method for vlogs as students tips and tricks browser uh, browser vlog select the language uh, if you don't like something you can go ahead and uh, discard it so there are vlogs in hindi right i can actually discard a vlog if i don't like or i can just keep on making it. so it is that simple to upload a video in kishtab now let's go to the next section which is document maintenance now in document maintenance you must have seen that right below the picture i had another section which was notice board so let's go ahead and make a notice board so i have a prepared notice board for me but if you click on notice board what you will see is a select language tab go ahead and select the language over there and put what you want to put uh, you can actually make a table in there and put pictures inside so there are a couple of pictures of us uh, we we have Kishtab school so i'll go ahead and put three pictures over here i will drag it now now my table is ready all i have to do is drag these pictures in here so i'll go ahead drag the pictures in different section and i can keep on writing about uh, what all what all these people do what they are who they are and uh, whatever message i have to do so once i'll save it everything will go on uh, the notice board same i can actually browse for more images over here and put those images in my notice board as of now i'll just take away this picture now let's move on to the next section which is about us so at the bottom of the uh, website you must have seen about us section about us is the section where uh, you have uh, all the knowledge about your institute who, who or who all are running the institute what this institute is all about so this is where i can click on the footer and i can know about uh, any institute so now enter to enter that about us all you have to do is select a language in what language you want to enter about us and the pictures as i showed you the last time and entered uh, what what the different designations are and go ahead and save it as similar to notice board now same thing happens with terms and conditions and privacy policy so you go to privacy policy you go ahead and select the language and once you have selected the language you go ahead and enter terms and condition same goes to terms and conditions you click on terms and conditions select the language and on that language you go ahead and enter your terms and conditions so these are important uh, important documents which you when when uh, so these are important documents so when you are having an online school it's very important to have these documents in a corrected format so you can actually go ahead and implement your school in those guidelines so let's go ahead and see the next section now next i have reference data so now in reference data i have uh, a lot of things which i can actually play around with 
uh, to make my website more compatible, more uh, more engaging. So first of all, India has a lot of languages, and in 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 your country, if you if you have one or two language, you can actually go ahead, select the language, and add those languages in. So for example, over here there are a lot of languages which I which I might not use, so I might just x them out. Or if if there is a new language which I have to use, I will go ahead and add it, right, and save language. Now move on to the next section is board and course. So let's go ahead and add a board and course in uh, our uh, website. So now I have added a few boards over here. Same way of adding it. Uh, click on an add button, add your uh, board, and if a board is redundant, go ahead and exit out and save board and course. The next is grade year semester. So now in grade year semester, what you got to do is you have to add what all standards are there in an institute. So your institute uh, might be running on semesters, so you can add semesters over there, or maybe first year, first semester kind of uh, information uh, you can add over here. Uh, and, and if they are simple grades, then you can see over here, sixth grade, seventh grade, all is being added. And you can go ahead and save. Uh, same way, you add something, uh, you discard something, and over here, you can actually prioritize them. You can sort them up and down by using these arrows. Now, the next one you look at is competitive exams. The competitive exams are something if you are a coaching institute and you are working towards a, a preparation for students on a competition exam, right? So you can enter these things over here rather than board and course. Now, let's look at subjects. Now, in subjects, you go ahead and enter what all you teach, all right? So in here, uh, there is biology, biotechnology, chemistry, civics, computer applications. I have added multiple things just to set example every time I'm demoing. So it's the same method. You go ahead, X out something which is redundant, go ahead, add one which is more close to you. So this subject is going to play a very important role when you are going to set your course management. Now let's go back to reference data and look at chapters. The same as you entered subjects, you will go ahead and enter chapters over here. But the tricky thing comes in now either you are a board course uh, school or you are a competitive uh, training institution you have to select that section over here you have to select your board course what you have entered before you have to select uh, what year it is uh, for what uh, grade what year what semester this particular uh, chapter will be for you will go ahead click, uh, click on the subject which you have entered before so now what all you have entered before will come down to this section and you'll select and you will start adding chapters right so i'll show you uh, for cbsc ninth grade uh, let's go to what mathematics all right uh, let's go and select the language as english and uh, you know go ahead and if you want to have a translation to other language, you can do that. I'm not going to have any, so I will just do English to English, right? So you can see all these chapters I have entered already. Now, if I am teaching in English and another language, what I'll do is I'll translate it to another language and enter those uh, that data over here and prioritize them. For example, number system is the second chapter and polynomials is the first one. I'll go ahead and put number system down and polynomial up. So you, and once you have done your changes, add new chapters or discard the existing uh, redundant ones and save chapters. Let's go to reference data back again and you see academic qualifications. Now this academic qualification will be used once teachers are adding their data, right? So if, you, if parents or students wants to know about teachers, schools wants to know about teachers, what all academic qualifications you should have. So I have entered over here. It's a certificate a teacher has taken, a bachelor's degree or a diploma or a doctoral or a master, post-diploma, postgraduate diploma, research, undergrad. So you can see all the possible hiring which I do for my school has to be here. And you go ahead, save, same thing, add a new one, discard the redundant one. Now let's go back to reference data and look at field of study. This is again for the teachers you are hiring or you have hired uh, in your school. So what, uh, what field of study they are coming from so that when they are entering their data, they can actually take the academic qualification from that section and field of study from that section. So that's all, that's all the master data which you have to create for your institute.
Now let's go back to reference data in specialization. You can see below field of study, there is a specialization. So whatever their field of study will be, uh, under this, they have done some specialization, right? So you have to fill those specializations as well so that they can go ahead and enter their private details. So somebody is, has done M8, uh, Masters in Education, right? Uh, where they can, uh, they can teach children, uh, but they have done that specialization in biology. So that's what you have to enter over here. Let's move away from teachers and enter uh rest of the master data where you have to enter the state and union territories uh district uh for for your school so you go ahead enter all the states and union territories you have for which the school might enter their details or the teachers might enter their details as address or students might enter their details so i have added few uh once again same thing discard the redundant one add a new one and save so once all that is done, your institute will look something like this and you will be able to see the slider on top. You'll be able to see the notes. You'll be able to see the pictures from your school. You will be able to see uh, study tips and tricks. You will, uh, you will be able to see your vlogs about us, terms and condition and privacy policy. Now, let's have a look at where these videos are coming from this is a collage of your institute videos so how that will come from so nobody logged into the system can actually make use of this collage and play videos as a snippet that how your school trains if you have no videos this collage will not be there and uh, this will still work uh, but the moment you will start having videos uh, web lms will pick it up and push it on your website so let's go ahead and start with course management the first step you will do is you will create courses so now in here i will give you a small example of a course so for example i have created a ninth grade so i have named it freely saying cbsc board ninth grade and i have added subject how i did that so i went ahead add a new course i gave it a name now this time i'll give it name 10th board okay so i will say c E S E board. All right. And then I will give a description saying, you know, all subjects. And I'll go ahead and save it. So now here it is CBSC board 10th, all subjects. I will go ahead and add a few more details to it. So I have clicked on that plus symbol. It's a board and course. I will go ahead, select the board. I will go ahead, select its 10th grade. I will say all subjects and I'll select the subjects. I'm going to teach biology in it. I'm gonna teach chemistry. I'll teach chemist, uh, computer application, English. Uh, let me see what else I will teach geography. Mm, let's take a language subject, um, history, mathematics. That's important. And I will teach physics and Sanskrit. Uh, and of course, science uh, and social science. Let's take more subjects so that we understand what we are covering. So I have selected a couple of subjects over here. So we select the languages I can teach it in. I can teach it in English, Hindi, and I can teach the same thing in Sanskrit as I have language subject. Now I'll go ahead, click OK. So now you can see CBSC Board 10, CBSC 10 Standard Biology, Chemistry, uh, Computer Application, English, Geography, all the subjects are taught in english hindi and sanskrit once i have done that i'll go ahead save details my course is saved if i don't like that course i can just go ahead and trash it i have trashed the course now the course is no more with me i can go ahead and look it up in inactive i have to restore it i can go ahead and click on it restore button and that will come back in my list i can go ahead and edit that list will go on active and now I see CBSC 10 port over here. I can edit those details by click on this or I can just remove it, all right? So now let's go ahead. What's the next session is students group. What all groups will be there in my CBSC 10th board, right? So I'll go ahead and create them uh, by this add button. What I can do is I can give it a name, that section A, and I have two sections of that sort. What I'll do, I'll take this one and I will assign two teachers over here. I will go ahead, I will assign myself and Shubra. So there are two teachers teaching biology to section A and you know, can take the uh, biology to section B with two different teachers 
I will take here uh, Rahul and Preeti. So now there are two teachers defined for uh, biology, uh, 10th grade biology section A and, uh, and 10th grade biology section B. I will go ahead, save these details. Now I have created a students group. Now what happens when I have a student group and a course that I can go ahead and get the teacher and student staff and start assigning them to these courses. I have already assigned teachers, but first I'll show you where these teachers came from. So let's go to staff register. Now this is very pivotal uh, for any institute installation. Whenever you put teachers, you don't have to go one after another. If you have a new teacher, you can just go ahead and click on new staff member and add it over here. Or else you can go ahead and download this bulk upload template. There will be another video where I will show you how to exactly enter data in bulk upload template and upload it over here. And once you have entered the data in this particular Excel sheet, you go ahead and upload it back on, onto your system and all those teachers will be created with different roles and their user ID and password and employee ID. Mm, so I can select that particular uh, file from my computer and, and load it back. I will go ahead, save the changes if I'm making any. I can actually add personal details as admin to myself and other teachers can add their personal details in their profile. So they have to just click on their profile and edit profile and they can enter their personal details from here. The well, interesting part over here is I can actually grant roles from here. So the, the this icon is for the teacher role. This uh, receiver icon is for the admin role. Uh, this is for site maintenance and this is for, uh, you know, sales rep role and this is for demo user. So if I you want somebody to be the demo, so you can see XNP dummy sales. So that's uh, that's the dummy uh, demo role. Uh, you can actually go ahead and give them admin and teacher role together, which you will see in my scenario. I have teacher role, I have uh, admin role and I have data maintenance role. What, what what do we mean is when site maintenance is it, uh, this is the site maintenance role uh, will allow you to put on help videos, slideshows, picture collections, tips and tricks, and vlogs. Now, with an admin role, you will be able to play with staff register. You will almost be able to do everything on this website, right? You will be able to have the control into other chapters, other teachers' uh, study material too, where you can change it, and if you don't like something, you can actually remove it. So this is the admin role where you you can actually venture everywhere. As a teacher, you will be able to go inside your lessons. You will be able to add your things. You will not be able to assign yourself to somebody else's class and you cannot uh, remove data from anybody's class, only your class, all right? So there's a slight restriction with teacher role in this scenario, uh, but pretty much very close to admin what you can do. But as the point of safety, teacher roles uh, to be given more than admin role because admin can do a lot of things on the website. Now, similarly, let's go to the students register. Student register is pretty much similar to staff register. What you do is you bulk upload, uh, download the bulk upload template, you upload the bulk upload template, you go ahead and enter students ID, first name, middle name, last name, their date of birth, their user ID, password, and their email. And you can assign them to different courses right from that bulk upload. There will be another video supporting that particular functionality where how to enter data in bulk upload template. But for now, you can actually uh, uh, just go through with me on, on these functionalities where you can actually sign them up for different courses. You can go ahead and sign them up in different groups. So all the groups can be seen over here. So you don't have to do one thing at a time. You can enter all that data in one go. So you see that I have entered KS1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All that is done in one go only. You can go ahead and lock a student. You can deactivate the student. All the deactivated students can be seen in the deactivated button uh, tab. So let's go ahead, deactivate a student and re restore it back. So I want to deactivate demo student. I have deactivated it. Now I'll go to deactivated window and I will see this student. I can go ahead and restore this student as well. If I want to take away the axis, not deactivate him, I can actually put a, put, go and put a lock on uh, any student. I can enter the personal details. Students can enter their personal details, being an admin. You can change a student to demo user right from here. So now let's get started as a teacher. And as a teacher, 
a teacher can go ahead and take live class with their students. Let's say I have to take a live class with my students on 9th, and that should be starting at 9 o'clock. I'm good. Uh, it should be 45 minutes, and uh, I will go ahead and add that class. I will go ahead, record that class if need be. I will go ahead and book selected. Over here, I can put my details of the class I'm going to take. Once that is done, I can click on book. Now let's go ahead and see what you can do inside Compose Lessons. Now in Compose Lessons, it is very interesting that you can load any file from video, audio, PDFs, presentations, images, text documents, everything and comprise a lesson out of it, right? So let me take you to coordinate geometry. So what I have done in coordinate geometry, it's my chapter. I have created for ninth standard mathematics, right? And I can actually go ahead, manage artifacts inside. I can go ahead and browse different things over here. Uh, here is a few images I have loaded. Here, uh, here is a, a presentation I have loaded. Here's a PDF I have loaded. Here are two videos I have loaded. I can also load audiobooks. I can use live session recordings over here, in which I just showed you that how to live, uh, how to take a live session. And that live session recording can be actually taken up over here as well. So you can click on it and take the date range when you took that live class and go ahead and put it inside. So now I'll show you how a lesson is created. So you click on new lesson, you give it a name, the test lesson. All right, let's create it in a language, English, and let's go. You know what? I teach a regular level. It's a board and course for me right now. I am teaching CBSC. We created 10th standard. We are teaching biology and let's put up a chapter for biology. I don't have a chapter for 10th standard biology. Do I have a chapter for chemistry? No, I don't. Mm, so 10th standard, after 10th standard, I can select any of these uh, chapters. Uh, let's go ahead and teach pair of linear equations in two variables and I go ahead and create it. So once that is created, uh, you will be able to see it on your board. So I can see the 10th standard mathematics. So here it is, CBSC 10th standard mathematics. Uh, this is uh, a test lesson name will be right here. Uh, this will be for whatever language it is for and I can go ahead click on manage artifact and start putting data over here So I just can browse it before browsing. I have to put the name what I'm going to put in so let's say I'm gonna put a video so video one all right, and I can just drag it or browse it so once that is done I will go ahead and Save details right I can put pictures as I told you earlier and PDFs and all that now, once I'm done with all that, I can click on publish, or if I don't like what I did, I can just go ahead and trash it, right? I have disabled the feedback. You can actually enable the feedback as well. So students can tell how the teacher is uh, teaching. So school can know that if the job is being done properly or not. All the artifacts for a particular chapter can be seen right below over here. And uh, you can add teachers. So for example, in this scenario, I wanna add Shubra with me, right? So I got this teacher, I can go ahead, find him with his employee ID or his name, and I added him too. I have to go ahead and save details every time I am done with uh, any changes. I don't wanna add him right now, so I'll take him away. So now let's go ahead and get into assignments and tasks. So in tasks, what you can do is uh, there are a few tasks being created. Uh, you can suspend them, you can publish them, you can put them for scores, you can schedule them. Let's create a new task. And similar uh, to lessons, you just have to give the name, language, difficulty level, uh, board course and all that. Once selected, click on create. Once created, you can start publishing data into it. So let's go to a task where I am. So let's name it generic task, and it's for CBSC ninth grade civics, which is having all these chapters covered in it, right? So you can see what is democracy, a democracy in contemporary world. All this is added in here, and I can 
go ahead and start adding questions. So I can see there are five questions. I can see the incomplete status like this. So none of the questions have anything. So here's something. Now, this is your question one. I can go ahead, accept it in three different forms, online or handwritten, type online only or handwritten only, whichever I want for my students to submit it as. So I have these pictures over here uh, in this panel. I can go ahead and drag them straight away to the task. I can add new picture by clicking on browse or simple drag and drop. I can change the marks on the questions. And once all is done, I can save all questions. So keep on moving on to the next question. So now you can see that that incomplete status has question one as blue because I have entered data for it. So this can be once done can be actually published for students to uh, take it, right? So uh, those those assignments can be taken up by students on a, in a scheduled fashion. Now let's see how we can schedule these assignments and assign them to a student group or a class or a grade. Uh, we can click on assignment and scores. Uh, over there, we can actually create a new assignment out of these. We can keep it long-term or schedule test. When I'm saying long-term, it means it should be submitted by this date and time, after which it won't be available for submission. Or you can schedule it for a particular time window. In this case, I'm gonna schedule it for 10th of September uh, and submit it by 10th of September, end date. And I want them to start working on it straight at 9 a.m. And at 10 a.m., I will want them to finish. So I will go ahead, click on OK. So this one hour schedule is set for this particular test. So it's a test schedule. I can now go ahead, allocate students over here. So you know I have created biology 10th grade section A. So I'll go ahead and enter that and uh, here it is i will select it and the students are allocated for this so now any student assigned to biology 10th class a uh, 10th grade a section will be able to see this particular scheduled test in their um, app they can go ahead and pick it up uh, when the time starts before that it will not enable them to take it now from assignments let's go to multiple choice questions now when you look at mcqs they have options four or five options and also they have uh, some text some images and all so there are uh, in mcq case there are uh, there will be bulk questions so uh, since so case of multiple choice questions we have a question bank which you can create so you go ahead and select what you want to create this question bank for upload uh, download this upload template and once you have entered the question in it go ahead and upload this bulk template so once you have bulk uploaded the template uh, you will start seeing these questions over here now you can go ahead and create a test using these questions you can also put a single question by this you can go ahead and edit the question like this as well if you want to edit a particular question which is entered wrong right so if there is a common question it will be uh, deduplicated uh, and only updated. So let's go ahead and see how we can incorporate this question bank in while we are creating a test. So in order to create a test, you can go ahead and click on Compose, Schedule and Examine Test under Tasks and Tests. Over here, you will see different questions being created. Uh, that's by me, but uh, you can go ahead and create a new test for yourself test name, select language, test duration, difficulty level, uh, the progression type, the progression type is forward progression, forward or backward progression. You can also do um, board and competitive over here, select all the things as you have been selecting before and click on create. So I'll take you to a test which has been created by me. And yeah, so here's an English test. I have created Rahul Civics test. Uh, this is a very difficult and forward progression only and I have created a feedback for it too, right? So once done, I can actually go ahead edit questions. There are a few questions. I will go ahead and, you know, check the status. So you can see all the questions are in blue. None of them are in white. So the questions are complete. I can do the questions in 
multiple choice one correct i can do multiple choice several correct i can do numeric values so you can see the numeric value is already there and i can do it a uh, multiple choice i can uh click on multiple choice one correct and i can give them the answer as one two and three and now uh i don't click on all of them none of them or other right uh and when i do this uh, my correct answer seems like one so what i'll do is i'll click on this one and this will uh become darker by default it is and we will go ahead and move on to the next question so there are seven questions i can go ahead reduce them as well i can go ahead increase them as well and i can change the marks for every question i can select where there is a negative marking on this question or not I can import a question from outside as well from the question bank which i have created so i cl click on import and start selecting them from where i want to import and once done i can start importing one on one after another and those questions uh, can be taken up in this test as well so once done i can go ahead and schedule a test for a for a class so this is ninth class history i so over here i can go ahead and add a new schedule so i want students to take this test on 10th at same 9 a.m right after their assignment so somewhere close to 12 in the afternoon and i don't have to put the end time because it's scheduled already uh it's 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 uh i don't have to put the time because uh it is already for a certain duration now I have created it for 10th. I'll select that and I will start allocating students. So let's put somebody from ninth grade. The ninth grade, uh, let's keep this test for ninth grade mathematics uh, section A. Mathematics ninth grade section A. So all these students from mathematics science grade will get these uh, tests in their app already. I can also trash this uh, as I have shown you earlier in other things. So I can trash it. Uh, once it's uh, deactivated, I can bring it back over here. Uh, I can allow it for practice. So now allow for practice is different from schedule. So when I allow it for practice, uh, that means a student can see it from that grade and keep on taking it again and again and again. So, so you can once again go ahead, enable or disable the feedback. Add the chapters as well if you have changed the, uh, changed the uh, test. So I have added third chapter, Anatomy of a Flowering Plant. From task and test, let's move on to communication. Now, communication happens between the groups. I don't want uh, uh, the whole school to talk to each other. So there are different groups created and the communication which happens inside the group. So teachers and students of that particular assigned group can communicate with uh, each other. So as you know, Shubra is a teacher and there is a student named Nidhi Dubey. They are, they are, they are communicating on the, uh, in this group, which is biology 12th grade starts. I have a ninth grade group as well, uh, which I have created. So I have sent them a message um, and uh, all your content for coordinate geometry is ready. So now they can go ahead and study there, right? Now, this is how you can actually communicate with your student groups. This is a very secured shell communication. So this communication doesn't go out of this uh, particular app. Nobody outside from the app can actually go inside and communicate. Now let's go to the report cards. So it's a very fascinating feature of this whole application where all you have done so far, you can start publishing report cards as well. I'll show you something what I already created as half yearly. So you can see there's a school signature, which I have upload. Okay. So I can actually click on scan signature and upload a new signature over here, right? A uh, seal and signature. I can go ahead and, you know, create a new report. I can go ahead and, uh, you know, work on it while editing. So if for an existing report, I can add the student uh, one after another or a whole group, and I can add the subjects over here. And every subject teacher can come in and give their marks based on their own subject. They can keep the, uh, keep the full marks as as well. They can actually go ahead, either score it in marks or in grades. They can put up their remarks. They can give their descriptive assessment as well. These are few fields I have created as attendance, attentiveness, and behavior. So for Akshat, I'll go ahead and create an attendance as 45%. He just doesn't come to school. And I am upset about his attendance. Now I go ahead, save this. So attendance remark is saved. 
So whenever you change a report card, you go ahead and click on save subject and scores. Uh, you can go ahead and generate PDFs. Once the PDFs are generated, you can go ahead and see their reports. And once you click on published, they are available for students in their own section of the website uh, and app. So I can go ahead, see the report, which I just created for Akshat. And I can see over here, And I can see over here, I have just changed the remark to, and I am upset about this, his attendance. So this is a runtime report which can be created and they can actually download it and they don't have to interact with the school to get their report cards. That's an overview of what you can do in this institute website. Uh, this will be customized for uh, our uh, institutes and the app will be customized for the institutes and they can go ahead do this what what i just showed in my uh demonstration and over here uh in the next coming videos you'll be seeing how to upload a bulk student bulk teachers and do a bulk question upload in test bank thanks a lot bye bye